Hello everybody and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program where last episode we just put a telescope up in orbit over the sun and we need to see if we can see any asteroids here but I don't think we're going to be doing any like asteroid capture right now. Uh, looks like we don't really see too much of anything at this moment so that's fine. We are, our, our scope is actually right over here. It's not very far away right now, but that's fine. We're going to hop back out of here and take a look at what contracts are currently available because I don't really have a good idea in my head right now of what we're going to do for this exact moment. So let's hop into the mission control here. Plant a flag on Gilly. Well, we're going to have to go back there eventually. We can grab that for now. Plant a flag on Minmus. I mean, we're going to have to go back there eventually as well too because we want to put the ionographer there. So we can grab that as well. Do we have the ionographer now? Uh, let's check in our R&D. I believe... Yeah, we have the ionographer. We could go back to Minmus. Or we could go back to Gilly. We need to, to do both of those. Another thing that I might be interested in doing is the same sort of a moon run over towards Ike. That might not be a terrible idea either. That'll get us a ludicrous amount of science as well. But let's go ahead and open up, and I'd like to only do one run to Ike if that's going to be the case. So let's go ahead and open up the Moon Lander, and for that to happen, we would need to alter this design a little bit. So what we'd want to do is drop this down, and we would want to go into the cargo. We would want to have, like, not that cargo storage unit, this cargo storage unit. And then we drop this one, so that would leave, go away and go like that. Then we would need a mobility enhancer like over here-ish. Um, I think the better option here, really, wait, this is the moon lander. Let's not continue this for the moment because we want the lander, not the moon lander. This is the updated version. There we go. And we're gonna update this version a little bit further. So I think we're gonna ditch these photovoltaic panels. We're going to change out some of this stuff as well. But I still want to have the SEQ-9 in here. And I still want to drop the SEQ-3. So we'll do something kind of like that. And then as far as the laddering goes, we'll ditch this bit of ladder. We'll ditch this bit of ladder, if I can grab it. There we go. And minimize the game, apparently. <laughs> Perfect. And this mobility enhancer, we could then put that here. So that would extend like that straight on down like this. Oh yeah, that should do the trick. So we retract that ladder and retract this ladder. Now I also removed the solar panels. So we're going to need to get ourselves some new solar panels. We don't need a lot of power in this. So honestly, like 6x1 are probably fine, but I would like them to be stowable because we're gonna be bringing this back. So we can put like 6x1 solar panels here and we would want those to be duplicated like this. So they would be retractable. Cool. And then I would like the spectrovariometer to go inside of the service bay if that's at all possible. I would love for it to just go in here. So maybe we drop this uh, heat shield out of here for the time being and stick that in there. It's overwriting a little bit there. That's maybe fine. We'll move the barometer like over here to be a bit more accessible. And the thermometer as well. We'll move that over here to be a bit more accessible too. There we go. So that fits in there nicely. Cool. The magnetometer is never really going to fit in there. So we'll leave that where it's at for the time being. We'll put the heat shield back on and reattach all of that. Cool. Now, inside of the container module, what are we going to want? Well, we're going to want everything that we need to set up an outpost in one single run. That's going to be the idea here. And we're going to need an experiment control station, a weather analyzer, even though we're probably not going to really utilize that, an ionographer, a passive seismometer, again, even though we're not really going to utilize that too much, a GUABD monitor, and how much power will this all require? Uh, do we have a, com a communication station here as well? Yeah, we need a communitron. So overall, we require one power, I think, for each of these. Is that correct? One power, one power, one power, and one power. So that's six total power, which means that if we get an engineer level one, 
to set up the photovoltaic panels. That means that we will be fine on six photovoltaic voltaic panels. There we go. Words are hard. But six photovoltaic panels, or rather three, each producing two power would power all of these. Bill is a little higher powered than that, but that's fine. Now, I would like the magnetometer to maybe be a little bit safer. Hypothetically, what if we were to mount it sideways, like in here? Something kind of like this. And then we would move it in like that, but down a bit. Kind of like this. And then close that. Yeah, that does fit in there. And then when we extend it, it extends out to the side like that. So in theory, that wouldn't burn off on re-entry. In theory. <laughs> and in theory, this laddering system will be slightly better. Again, in theory. And we're only going to need one flight. I like it. So I think for right now, we might take this straight to Ike. This should have no problem getting to Ike and back. And we would want to bring, at this point, Valentina, Bill, and Hadgard. Like this. So because Bill is a level 4 engineer, we're going to have no problem whatsoever getting enough power units. I like it. So let's double check our staging, make sure that's all good to go. Uh, this appears to be good. That would be our nose cones. Yes, yes, yes. We do want our drogue shoots to be separate. So something like that. But otherwise, this looks great. Checking thrust weight. Yep. Okay. Let's go ahead and save that and let's launch this. This is, of course, a much, much heavier thing than our than our telescope was. So we're going to be nowhere near as ridiculous overkill. <laughs> that was just a ludicrous amount of overkill on that scope. There's no doubt about it. But we're not going to run out of fuel on that thing anytime soon. I can tell you that. So let's go ahead and take this on off. And we are going to head off to Ike, I think. We're only going to need the one flight to Ike, and that is wonderful. Although, if we look at our contracts... Maybe we should go to Gilly again. We need science data from space around Gilly. We need to plant a flag on Gilly. And we need to go on an orbital spacewalk near Eve. That would get three contracts done. We should go to Gilly. Okay. Well, this is going to be our final planned Gilly flight then. We're going to have to go back to Minmus at some time in the future. But for now, this will be fine. And let's just head on over and work on getting orbital here. We'll lock to prograde. And off we go. We'll see how we do on our actual apoapsis height. I'm guessing based on the speed at which we're tipping over here, or not tipping over as the case may be, that we're going to overshoot our height. So I'm actually going to pull us over a little bit and take this a bit more aggressively. Don't want to go so aggressive that we tumble. But I just want to get a bit more aggressive here. Something along the lines of this. We could grab our atmospheric analysis, but we are stowed. We don't really need much from Kerbin at this point. So I'm not too concerned about that. We're going to have our SRBs falling off shortly, so let's stabilize at prograde. There goes the SRBs. And at this point, I'm going to go all the way over to the horizon here. I do wish that Valentina had the ability to uh, lock to maneuver nodes and such like that, but that's fine. She'll get there. So we're going all the way to the horizon, and we're just going to chill here. And we'll burn horizontal for a bit. We need to get our orbital uh, apoapsis height up to somewhere around 100 kilometers. That would be ideal. But really what we need right now, more than anything else, is simply horizontal speed. And that's exactly what we're going for. As I expected, we were a little bit uh, overshooting the vertical, but that's fine. 
We're just going to burn out this whole tank. There we go. And now throttle down, and we'll separate. Actually, I'm going to burn a little bit just to separate, but there we go. We'll just lock to prograde now. And we're not going to burn any more out of this tank until such a time as we are in space here. And I also want to get ourselves a circularization maneuver here. That's good enough. And burn time in 30 seconds. Okay, that sounds good. And this is about 700 meters per second to get into orbit. Okay, not ideal, but it'll do. We should extend our solar panels before I forget to do that. Uh, we should not be on prograde for right now. Extend those solar panels, and we're going to start this burn shortly. Okay. There we go. And let's begin the burn. And off we go. We'll physics warp the burn for the time being. I would like to be able to lock to this maneuver node right now. That would be handy, but no such luck for the time being. After this flight, Valentina will absolutely be able to. So that's good. We can probably just lock to prograde at this point, for the time being anyway. Yeah, locking to prograde here is fine. We're at apoapsis, so... Few more seconds of burn time. And we're now in orbital mode. I'm not concerned about this maneuver. What I'm watching here is this number here, and that's good enough. We'll call that fine. And we're going to want a gravity assist from the moon as we exit here, just to save a little bit of delta V. So that would be what? Somewhere around here? Oh, that's great. Do we impact the moon here? Oh, we do. Okay. We should uh, probably try not to impact the moon. That's not an escape. Okay. So let's try not to impact the moon here and do something a bit more along the lines of this. There we go. That should be a decent gravity assist. We'll position for that. And in theory, we'll get there eventually. And then we'll warp to this next maneuver. So right about... Now-ish. That's good enough. This is, of course, going to be a pure prograde burn. So once we get around there, being locked to prograde isn't going to be a problem. And this will escape us out of the Kerbin system. We'll just hold here for the moment. And our burn will start in about 50 seconds. So we'll warp a little bit closer to that once we get in position here. There we go. 40 seconds to go. Okay. Three, two, one, burn. Off we go. And we'll physics warp. Because this will be a fairly lengthy burn. I'm not touching anything right now. This rock is just physics warp. That's literally all it is. Wobbling back and forth like this. That is just physics warp. But that's fine. We are in approximately the correct direction, and that's all we need for now. So we've got about 200 delta V left to burn here. Let's go ahead and come out of the physics warp and position this a little bit more correctly. There we go. 100 meters per second. 60 meters per second. 40. Okay, just going to try to make this be a little bit more efficient. That's good enough. We'll save the 2.4 meters per second. And at this point, we are not going to collide with Moon. Perfect. And we're not going to uh, remain in the Kerbin system. So that is wonderful. Our next point, of course, is to set Eve as our target. But we're going to have to escape here. So we are going to need to get to this Moon encounter. We'll go ahead and warp here. We can't warp too far, of course, because of these multiple encounters here with the gravity assist. But that's fine. Wow, Moon Minmus? That's interesting here. We've got kind of a conjunction, and the sun's right here too. Cool. <laughs> 
Well, we'll continue to warp until Moon Escape here. There we go. Goodbye, Moon. Goodbye, Kerbin. We'll be back. That's for sure. So we're back to In Space High over Kerbin, and our next warp is going to be... Let's see, that's in a year. It's going to be what, like up here? That's in a year too. 17 days. So yeah, like up here. That's quite a distance, but uh, sure. So around here? Sounds good. 15 days. Off we go. So of course, our next move is going to be an inclination change. We're going to try not to come in retrograde to Gilly this time. <laughs> that will uh, be a helpful thing. So let's get ready for that inclination change. And when is that going to be? Oh, hello. There's our first asteroid that we see. An unknown object there, and one here as well. That's a huge asteroid. So yeah, we're starting to see those now. So that's perfect. We're going to be in space high over the sun in a moment. There we go. And we can grab our mystery goo observation and our material study here. We may as well. There we go. And we'll have Haggard EVA. And he'll head on down here. We'll need to extend this ladder. I sure hope he can navigate this bend. Yes, he can. Perfect. I didn't test that. So uh, it's, it's good to know. We'll collect the data from the Science Junior. Actually, uh, we should hop back in here, collect the data up this way, and then reset the data. Restore the Mystery Goo Containment Unit as well, and then conduct the experiments again. Keep both of those. Collect the data. Uh, yes, I'm aware of this. Don't show that again. Collect that data, and then we'll restore both of them. And we'll close the service bay and head back in. Interesting. Oh, there we go. Now we're good. <laughs> Fantastic. So that data is now stored here. We can't run these again because we have nowhere to store the data. So that'll be fine. The, our next objective, of course, will be to come around to the ascending node. That's quite a ways away, but that's fine. We'll come around to the ascending node here, and we're going to need to burn anti-normal. Just a little bit. There we go. 333 meters per second. We'll flip around to anti-normal. And that's going to be a pretty lengthy warp, so let's go ahead and get started on that. And I'm once again not going to make you sit through this whole warp, so I will be back at the end of the warp. See you in a bit. Oh, okay. Uh, apparently the hotkey that I have set up to unpause opens up the console. <laughs> cool. Well, all we did here was we... Uh... Oh, yeah, it would, wouldn't it? I'll need to change that hockey. But all we did was warp to this. There was nothing else that happened. So I also apologize if those pauses are a bit of a harsh transition on the audio side. I'm considering what to do about that. I'm not entirely sure yet, but we'll get to that in a moment. But this burn is going to be in 20 seconds here. So we'll get to 10 seconds. There we go. And let's begin that burn now. Cool. We can physics warp it. No problem with that. Gonna be a little wobbly, but should be fine. Okay. We're gonna chase the node a bit here because we definitely do want the node to be the actual burn that we get. And that's 2.2 meters per second. This is probably good enough. Let's see. Uh, yep, this is good enough. Fantastic. So next up, we want to set up an encounter with Eve. We'll bring that on in, and what's that looking like? Not the greatest, but not awful either. So if we were to burn that like up here, we would get ourselves an encounter. And we would be coming in. We need to actually focus Eve for the moment. We would be coming in like so. Ah, there we go. We'd be coming in this way. We can see Gilly is going this direction. We'd be coming in this direction. So this is, in fact, retrograde from Gilly. So we're going to have to adjust this node. We'll see about just changing when we burn it. Ah, this is not wanting to move <laughs> the way I want it to move. I want to move it this direction. There we go. 
Yeah, that's more like it. So now when we come in here, you can see we'll be going this way and Gilly will be going this way. So we are in fact not going to be retrograde to Gilly. Hooray! <laughs> so that's going to be 857.3 meters per second. That's fine. We will head on over to that node. We'll physics warp while we turn. And once again, this is going to be a bit of a lengthy time warp to get to when we want to burn this. So we'll just go ahead and start that warp. And once again, I will be right back. And we're back with about a minute until the burn. Fantastic. So we're just going to position ourselves retrograde here. And we'll physics warp a little bit while we position. And then regular time warp down to around here and we'll begin that burn momentarily now there we go bit of a lengthy burn so we will physics warp through that cool as expected we're having no power issues here i mean this should be more than enough power for this particular mission no problem there and we've got everything that we need here of course we could land at the same place we don't have to. We absolutely don't have to. So I'm going to chase this node a bit. I do want the node to, or rather, I do want the maneuver as we set it up. I don't necessarily want just whatever we can get. Because we want a very specific encounter here because we're going to Gilly. This will save us quite a lot of Delta V with not having to uh, flip around our orbit. So that'll mean that our re-entry will be maybe a little less spicy. That said, I just realized... We never ditched these. <laughs> Let's uh, go ahead and do so now. But before we do that, I'm actually going to retract these solar panels. Just in case. I don't want to blow up our solar panels. Uh. Uh. Why didn't they go? We didn't have much fuel left in here, so it's actually not probably a problem, but why didn't these decouple? They're right here, and they were in this stage multiple times there. I guess we'll decouple them the old-fashioned way, but that was certainly not what we intended. I mean, it would be funny if we could redock this. That's not how it works, <laughs> sadly. I mean, we're fine, but... That's not how that should have worked, if I'm honest. So we're going to have to flip this all on around, like so. And hypothetically, I mean, our inclination is way off. We're not going to go for an even, or rather a gilly encounter here. But yeah, 860 meters per second. We're losing about 200 meters per second because it didn't jettison these when it was supposed to. It was absolutely supposed to jettison them next. I have no idea why it didn't. It's not like I had the wrong one there. It was absolutely correct. But this is fine. We're not actually going to have a problem here. We can just go ahead and warp to this next maneuver. That's going to be another 150 days. And in all honesty, we are very close to the end of the episode. So I think what I'm going to do here is I'm going to stop this time warp. And remember to extend our solar panels again before we run out of power. <laughs> There we go. And I think I'm going to put a cut in here. And next episode, we're going to head in and land on Gilly. Hopefully losing that uh, that Delta V due to the staging error there. Like, I don't think that was my error. I think that was the game messing up, in all honesty. But hopefully losing that Delta V won't cause this to be problematic. I don't think it will. But you can leave your offerings to the engagement gods in the form of likes, comments, subscribes, and bell ringings. And... I will see you all. Well, actually, we should uh, pause the game here. There we go. And hop into this. A very special thank you to all of the members for making this video possible, including Casserole, Sigma162, JJ Gamer, Spartan News, Rose Valentine, and all the rest. And of course, you. Thank you for watching. If you'd like to support the channel, you can click the join button down below the video. And as always, I will see you all next time.